I had a friend call me. And I think it was last week, not this week, but sometime not too far from today. And um, he called me, and all of a sudden he asked me this question. Sam, are you perfectly loved? Are you perfectly loved? And I thought, my wife loves me. My parents love me. My sister, brother love me. My, my friends, I think they love me. But perfectly loved? Hmm. I thought about that. And I think we often think about it, especially when we turn on the TV and, and look at the news and, and find out that a young person with so much life, with so much potential, has taken their life. Because somebody was mean, rude, bullied them, shamed them on the internet. And they couldn't take that. We live in a society where, where, where to love someone perfectly seems almost impossible. Our defense mechanisms all of a sudden just rise up. And, and, and they, they, they tell us, beware of loving perfectly. And we wonder if even we are loved perfectly. But the Bible gives us good news, amen? The Bible tells us that we are perfectly loved. That we are. God gave it all for you and me, amen? All of heaven was given to planet Earth. And I would like to go to our scripture reading and think of the words that Jesus shared with his disciples. Words that might seem difficult for us to understand. And he, we start in verse 43 where it says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor. Amen to that? Amen. And hate thine neighbor enemy. Boy, that's easy. Yes? No problem. We can do that, Jesus. But verse 44 tells us, but I say unto you, love who? Your enemies. And the Bible describes who we consider our enemies to be. And it also tells us what to do for them. Verse 44 tells us, Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Do you see a good description of what an enemy could be? Yes, people who use you, persecute you, hate you curse you, but the Bible calls us to love our enemies. And of course, the question is how? How can we love those who hate us? How can we love someone who curses us? How can we love one who despitefully uses us and persecutes us? How, Jesus? And maybe some of us are thinking, why? Why even try? You know? They don't deserve it, right? At least that's how I think many times. In the following verses, we hear the answer to the why. Verse 45 tells us, because you are children of your Father, which is in heaven, who makes his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. God loves me. God loves you. But God also loves everyone 
upon planet Earth. Difficult to, to, to comprehend, to, to understand, to, to, to grasp this concept that God loves the world in a very perfect way. The second reason that we find here in the text is found in verse 46. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? And the idea that I find in this second part of the text is that we are different. Or at least we should be different. Amen? We are different. We know differently. We are loved perfectly. And that love manifests itself. It shows in the way we love God, in the way we love others. Last week we were, not last week, last month, uh, we were studying the book Steps to Christ. There's a paragraph that caught my attention. If we keep uppermost in our minds the unkind and unjust acts of others, we shall find it impossible to love them as Christ has loved us. But if our thoughts dwell upon the wondrous love and pity of Christ for us, the same spirit will flow out to others. Amen to that? If we ponder, if we dwell upon the wondrous love and pity of Christ for us. Isn't that what communion is all about? It's a reminder of what Jesus did for you and for me. Yes, Jesus did not only die for Samuel Nunez. Jesus did not only die for Seventh-day Adventist. Jesus died for the entire world. Amen? That's the good news. And there's so many so many that don't know this. They don't know that they are perfectly loved. But Scripture is very clear about this love. In fact, if we go to 1 John 4.19, it tells us we love because God loved us first. Romans 5.8 tells us, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. 1 John 3, 1 tells us, Behold what manner of love the Father. Look at it. See it. It's there. That He has bestowed, He's given, He's gifted us that we should be called the children of God. And we could go through many passages in Scripture that describe this amazing love of love that we would say is perfect, a love that God is calling you and me to express to others. How do we do this? By fixing our eyes on who? On Jesus and the wonderful things that he has done for each one of us. Admiral Barry Black. Have you heard that name? Yes. Two-star admiral. And if I understand something about um, the military, that's kind of like the general for the Navy, yes? That's the highest rank. A chaplain today in the U.S. Senate. I've been reading a biography about him called From the Hood to the Hill. And in the first chapters of that book, 
he describes the amazing love of a mother for his son. Amazing. And how that love gave him confidence, how that love um, made him feel that he could do anything. But he also expressed in those first few chapters the love of a church for him. He said, there were people in, 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 in my community that, that would take me out of the projects there in Baltimore, the gang-infested streets, and then they, they would bring me to their home out in the country. And, and I got a glimpse of something different. And all this because they loved me. They loved me. I could see it. And that love motivated me to love others. Amen? Is God calling us to love perfectly? He is. We must be reminded that he loved us first. Amen? And because of what he did, we can also love others like he loved us. This is what communion is all about. But I don't want it just to be something that we do today. In an hour from now or two hours or in the afternoon, we all of a sudden, okay, it's over. It was nice to hear some stories. It was nice to have fellowship together. But should, be this, should this be something that we should think about every day, brothers and sisters? It's something that, that we should. At least take an hour, Sister White says. Take an hour to ponder Upon the love of God, you are perfectly loved. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us today. As we wash each other's feet, as we submit to one another, as we express our love to you, may we be reminded that we are perfectly loved. And it doesn't matter what people might say about us or even how we might feel about ourselves sometimes. And we fix our eyes on that amazing love demonstrated on Calvary on behalf of each human being. For we ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.